Hello everyone, welcome back to another video installment for Top Dog Tober. This is day three. We're going to be taking a look at a really trickle verbal reasoning type question today. But before we get stuck into that, I want to talk to you about the amazing offer we are running for the whole of October alongside these daily videos. Now, if you like this content, you're going to love what we have on offer for you on our website. So we release English, maths, nonverbal and verbal reasoning lessons every single week. Premium video lessons to learn all the things you need to know to pass the test. There's homeworks where you can download and have a go at yourself. And if you wanna see what the answers were and exactly how to solve them, we've got a video for that as well. All you need to do is go to our website, click on the link down in the pinned comment below and use my code vote Dylan to get 15% off an entire year's worth of video content. And holy, that is so many videos. We're doing 30 in October. There's over 200 if we count the entire year if you sign up using that code. Now remember, use my code because I don't want to do the forfeit at the end. Every single person who signs up using my code, that's one step closer to Hayden having to sit through the hot sauce challenge. Anyway, apparently he couldn't even be bothered to tell you the answer to this question that he showed you yesterday and loads of you put the answers in the comments. So we're gonna go and tell you now that the answer to this question was, B, we were looking for the most alike, and the rules were simple. You needed to have a circle in the corner, one triangle and two squares, one of which were black. So well done if you put B as your answer, but let's go to the tricky question, right, which I've been entrusted with. Yeah, let's go to this one. Now this is really tricky, okay? We've done videos on this before, some of our most popular videos ever, so we know you guys want as much practice as possible, so let's take a look. Three of these four words are given in code, and you're always given four four-letter words at the top, and three number codes underneath. Now what's brilliant is, because we only have three number codes, we know that these have to match up to one of the words at the top. One of these words out of four is not displayed at the bottom, so that's important information to start with. Now, we need to either find the code for a word, or work backwards to find the word for a code. So we're either going to go from letters to numbers or from numbers to letters. And we can't do any of that until we actually crack this question. So this comes in two steps. The first step is to find out what number represents each letter. So let's take a look at how we can do this. We've got coop, coal, look, and chap. Now, one thing I like to look for straight away are double letters. So we can see here, O, O. Whatever number represents O, we are going to see it come up twice in a row in the middle. Over here for look, we have O, O. Now this is vital information because just looking at my code underneath now, I already know which number represents O. Maybe you do too. And if you at the screen now shouting, it's one, you're absolutely correct. Because look, we have two ones here and we have two ones here. That can't be any other letter other than O. So we can put an O underneath, an O underneath, or if you don't want to put your letters underneath your number, you can just put a number on top of your letter. We know that these are one, 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 and we've solved the first part of our question because we know that O is one, which means we can also put a one here for coal. Now that's super interesting because now I know what this entire word is. How do I know what this entire word is? Well, we know it's not coop and we know that it's not look because those are taken up by the two other number codes we've just looked at. We also know that it's not coal, because if it was coal, we'd need a one in the second position, but this is a three. So therefore, chap is the only one left, and we've managed with a shortcut here to label the entire word. Now, whenever you manage to find an entire word, we get four code-breaking numbers at once. So anything with a C is five, so I'm gonna stick in all the fives with C. P I know is two, so coop ends in a two, five, one, one, two. Uh, and then looking over here, A is four, so coal has to have a four in it. And then we already know now, five, one, four, something is going to be coal. What's it going to be? Well, looking down here, we know that coop is five, one, one, two. So that means that six, one, seven, seven is look. So we can put our six here and our seven there, which means we're left with coal with an L at the end, which is a six. Once you've cracked the code, that's actually the tricky part of the question, okay? That's the hard bit, just cracking the code at the top. Once we've cracked it now, these questions are really easy. Find the code for the word coal. We've just done it. 
We've just found it by definition by cracking the code. It's 5146. So we don't have to do anything else now other than circle the answer. Now in the 11 plus, it's really important we do this. We're not gonna waste more time trying to solve something when we've already done the legwork. Just put the answer and move on. Find the word with the code 2457. Now we just simply work backwards and we look at one number at a time. What was two? Well, we found out that two was P. I can see that in coop. What was four? I can see in coal that four was A, so it's PA. And look at that. We could carry on, but remember, 11 plus is all about trying to save time. What's the only answer that starts with PA? Well, it's not coop, it's not lock, it's not hack, it's not polo. The only one left is A. Now, if you want to carry on and prove that five and seven were C and K, you can do that, but there's no need. We're gonna save time, and guess what? <laughs> we're gonna move on. So. Knowing what I've just shown you, I want you to have a go for me at this top bit. Simply have a go at trying to match up the numbers to the letters. Think about repeating letters. They don't have to be doubles. You could perhaps, my hint for this one is to look at what maybe words start with. Maybe look at what words end with. Do you see any repeating patterns? Any letters that must be certain numbers? Have a go. I'm not going to give you any more hints there. And I'll talk you through this one afterwards. So straight away, I noticed something that three of these four words have in common. R, R, R. Three of them end in the letter R. One of them ends in L. So I know that three of my codes end in the same number and one ends in a different number. So looking at these three codes underneath, I have a seven, a four, and a seven. Well, I know that that four must be the L because it's the only time a four comes up. Whereas the seven comes up twice, so that must be R. So just by looking at the last letter of each word, I've cracked two codes now. So every time I see an R, I'm going to write seven. So in pair and pair and bear, that's fine. Doesn't appear anywhere else, but it's helped me to work that out. That's no problem. But I do know that four is L now. So I'm going to put my L here above bail. I'm going to put a four, super. I've started to solve my question. The next thing I'm going to take a look at then is what else comes up more than once. And now I'm going to look at the start of the words. We've got a B and a B, a P and a P. So it only ever starts with a B or a P. Let's take a look here. We have a six and a six. So these are the same letter. But do you know what's really cool and I can fill out straight away? There's only one word that ends in an L, so I don't need to do any more calculating, any more working out. I know that this middle one must be bail. So I've immediately solved the whole word because it's the only one that ends in an L. Now I've got a B, an A, and an I. I know six is B, so I'm gonna put a B here at the front. And guess what? Now I know there's only one word that starts with a B and ends in an R, it's bear. So I've solved two words just like that. And now I can start to fill in the gaps. Every time I see a one, I'm going to put an E. And now I know E-R at the end, it must be peer. P-I-E-R. I've basically solved the whole thing now. Just this time I put the letters above the numbers. It doesn't matter, it still solves the code. Now I've done this, let's see if I can solve the question underneath. Find the code for the word leap. Well, L, if we go to bail, was a four. E, if we go to peer, was a uh, one. A, if we go to bail, was a two. And P, we're going to have to go to P there. It was a three, four, one, two, three. We're going to hope it's there. Absolutely it is. It's C. And the next one, find the word with the code 7254. We're just going to work backwards. Seven in P shows it was an R. Two, we're going to have to go here to bear. It was an A. Uh, is there, can I get the answer already? Yes, there's only one word that starts R, A. It's not lit. It's not ripe. It's not real. It's not there. It must be rail. The answer is E and we can move on. Really tricky question type, but remember the two steps are solve the code at the top and match up your letters to your numbers using letters that come up more than once, double letters, any patterns you can find, then answering the question is easy. So you guessed it, as always, it's your turn. Make sure you let us know in the comment section down below what you think the answer to this question is. And as always, you're gonna have to tune in tomorrow. I know it's Hayden, I'm sorry. You just have to put up with him for a day until I come back, but he will tell you the answer to this question. So let us know in the comments and come back tomorrow where you can see if you were right or wrong. Guys, remember, use my code, watch my videos. I don't want to do this forfeit. See you next time.